So you mentioned earlier how um, our situation right now in some ways is a race between how many people can we um, get vaccinated and how many people have immunity versus how much time does the SARS-CoV-2 virus have to replicate, to, to infect more people and potentially mutate into um, uh, variants that can potentially escape immunity, whether it's from a vaccine or from a natural infection. So one of the, the viruses, of course, that we're all very familiar with and to some degree, for better or for worse, comfortable with is influenza. And we are aware that we can potentially get influenza every year. And that's one of the things that I've thought a lot, a lot about. Is this going to be uh, a like an influenza scenario with, with this novel coronavirus? Um, so from your perspective as a virologist and an immunologist, um, how, how likely is that? Obviously, it's, influenza is a completely different family of viruses. Coronaviruses are different. So when you look at these two viruses, um, what comes to mind for you as you look ahead to the future? A simple answer right, is if, if you really get the case numbers way down and there are very few people uh, infected and you, you get lots of people vaccinated, there, there are very few opportunities for, for variants to show up and so it becomes less of, less of an issue. The more direct answer is we don't know. Um, uh, th there are definitely a wide range of opinions right now amongst, uh, amongst virologists and immunologists about uh, where, uh, where the future of this pandemic lies. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'd say definitely one end of the, the spectrum is, is people with their perspective that this will become like another influenza virus and there will be new variants uh, every every year or two and, and uh, annual vaccinations will be um, uh, the norm um, to, to try and deal with with the variants um, I'd say the essentially the opposite end of the spectrum would be SARS-CoV-2 variants do exist but the fact that there's actually been a lot of convergent evolution between the variants in, in different parts of the world on um, variants coming up with the same mutations uh, uh, may indicate that there aren't actually many mutations that the virus can do um, that escape immune responses. And so, uh, which may indicate that, that you need one more vaccine improvement, uh, for example, a vaccine that's a booster immunization that's that's really to the, the South Africa variant, because a, a lot of the other variants of concern um, look look fairly similar to that variant immunologically. And so using that one as a, as a stereotypic uh, variant that's escaped a significant amount of, of antibody responses, you, you may need you may need uh, one more booster uh, vaccine against that. And, and then after that, the virus may be mostly out of tricks. It may have basically played its best cards. Um, and and uh, I, I do think, I, I lean more towards that, that second uh, end of, of the spectrum. I, I do think in looking at the human antibody response and the human T cell response to this virus, they're both pretty broad responses, okay? Um, and, and so if it was a really narrow response, it's much easier for a virus to escape a narrow response than a broad response. And so the breadth of the response is, 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 a, good, is a good sign, plus um, data that people who have been infected with the South Africa variant are actually making very good antibodies, both against the South Africa variant and the parental strain. Um, uh, again, suggesting that there's there's basically there's not something magic about that variant. It, it's not that the immune system can't see that variant. It just uh, it, it just hadn't before. Um, and in fact, there's data that that people who have had regular who have who have natural immunity to COVID-19 and who get one dose of RNA vaccine actually make really good antibody responses to the South Africa variant, even though they've never seen the South Africa variant. Okay. Um, which is consistent with the immune system being pretty sophisticated about making antibodies um, 
that can recognize a virus in multiple different ways. So even if one solution doesn't work, it's got multiple other solutions at, at the same time, as well as those people, as, as I mentioned before, those people getting a big bump overall in their immune response. So uh, that, uh, whether having natural immunity or vaccination generates a decent amount of immunity, but then a booster uh, vaccine looks like it's likely to generate, well, a booster vaccine on top of natural immunity definitely generates a big bump in, in overall immunity. And that will probably also occur when people get booster doses after vaccination, though we don't have the data for that now. So uh, uh, from, the, from an immunological perspective, I think there's a decent chance that uh, that we have to deal with one big round here of variants and then it becomes less of a problem uh, in the future. Maybe the virus has like one additional escape that requires one additional round of, of um, coming up with a better booster vaccine. Um, uh, and I think the virology largely supports that as well, that, that, that the viral evolution uh, experts um, look at the mutation rates of this virus and, and people um, like Jesse Bloom who have looked at uh, mutation rates of common cold coronaviruses and how they've interacted with, with human antibody responses over time suggest a, a relatively slow evolution of, of that virus, uh, um, which, which I think is consistent with if you've got a good vaccine, it, it's likely to be able to protect